Coming to you live from Angkasa Puri, I'm Jessica Lee and this is News 10. Making the headlines tonight, students get to keep Peranti Siswa tablets. Government to ensure 5G rolled out remains as planned. Dini Pertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riyatuddin Al-Mustafa Bilal Shah today congratulated the government, participants and organiser for the success of the 2022 National Day celebration at Dataram Merdeka on the 31st of August. Comptroller of the Royal Household for Istana Negara, Datuk Sri Ahmad Fadil Samsudin, in a statement today said, His Majesty also expressed his appreciation to Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob and the Minister of Communications and Multimedia, Tan Sri Anwar Musa for making the event a success. Al Sultan Abdullah, in expressing his joy, said he was amazed by the spirit of unity, patriotism, and love for the country displayed by the people at the event, as well as similar events organized throughout the country. His Majesty is also impressed with the performance by members of all the contingents that participated in the ceremony. Dato Amar Fadil said the spirit of nationalism and love for the country displayed by them, especially the school students who are from various races, should be praised and emulated. According to him, the king also expressed his joy and gratitude to the people who went to the venue to watch the celebration. The crowd exceeded a target of 50,000 people. His Majesty expressed the hope that a spirit which directly reflected the closeness of the people of various races in the country will further strengthen harmony in the country. His Majesty also expressed the hope that the spirit will also be reflected at the Malaysia Day celebration this 16th of September. Now, all recipients of the Keluarga Malaysia Peranti Siswa tablets will not need to return the devices once they graduate. Now, this was announced by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob during the launch of Keluarga Malaysia Peranti Siswa Initiative at University Technology Mara or UITM Shala today. He said the government had decided on the matter today following feedback received during a meeting between the Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa and the Student Representative Council or MPP held on the 15th of August. Justru pada hari ini, sekecita saya mengumumkan bahawa kerajaan bersuju untuk memberikan terus tablet Berjenama ini kepada penerima peranti siswa. Jadi tak perlu pinjam, tak perlu pulang balik, kajian bagi terus kepada penerima penerima peranti siswa. The government had previously decided to offer the devices to eligible students studying in institutions of higher learning on a loan basis. Peranti Siswa Keluarga Malaysia is a government initiative in collaboration with selected telecommunications companies to supply tablets to B40 students. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the government also agreed to extend package Remaja Keluarga Malaysia registration period to ensure more students get internet access for online learning. Meanwhile, Tan Sri Anwar has reminded students receiving the free gadgets to not misuse or sell them. Now, on failed online applications, he said the ministry would refer to the students' representative councils to obtain confirmation on the applicant's family's income level before approval. Jika ada kes-kes rayuan, kes-kes rayuan yang gagal permohonan secara online kita akan uh, merujuk kepada persatuan-persatuan pelajar atau persatuan mahasiswa untuk membantu kita membuat perakuan terutama sekali dari segi pengesahan uh, tahap pendapatan uh, keluarga kalau sekiranya data-data 
asas yang kita gunakan mungkin tidak tepat ataupun telah ada perubahan-perubahan maka rayuan-rayuan juga tetap akan diproses sementara itu untuk fasa yang kedua masih lagi dibuka sehingga ke akhir bulan ini Tan Sri Anwar added that the distribution of devices will be done in stages, although allocation has been provided. He said this would allow new students who receive their university offers in the second half of the year to benefit from the program and will allow suppliers to be able to fulfill the 400,000 units requested by the government for this year. Meanwhile, recipients of Koranga Malaysia Peranti Siswa Tablet have all conveyed their excitement and gratitude to the government. They said this aid is very meaningful for them and promise to fully utilize the devices. Saya sangat gembira dan just want to terima kasih kepada MSU dengan Perdana Menteri. Saya sangat happy lah sebab dapat bantuan ni sebab dia banyak memberi apa faedah kepada apa uh, mahasiswa kan so saya sangat bersyukurlah dapat ni terima kasih BM okay. saya sangat terima kasih kepada Dan Sri kerana beri saya tablet ni dan dia memberi sedikit banyak manfaat lah kepada kami semua terima kasih uh, benefit yang saya dapat ni saya rasa uh, lagi bagi mudah dekat saya so saya boleh serve lagi banyak benda saya uh, belajar dan maklumat tentang belajar dengan lebih dalam Terima kasih kepada Perdana Menteri dan Kerajaan kerana memberi hal ini kepada mahasiswa dan mahasiswi yang B14 terpilih. Saya sangat bertuah sebab dipilih untuk mendapat uh, tablet ini dan uh, akan berusaha untuk belajar lebih sungguh-sungguh dan akan menjaganya dengan baik. Terima kasih. Now, the government will ensure the implementation of fifth-generation mobile network or 5G services goes according to plan, despite two mobile network operators or MNO having decided not to take a stake in Digital National Berhad or DNB. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said following the withdrawal of the two companies, negotiations with four other MNOs will continue and are expected to conclude within two weeks, adding that they involve adjustments in the agreement documents. Kita mengekalkan timeline perancangan yang sedia ada, yakni roll out seboleh-bolehnya pada bulan ini, walaupun kemungkinan rundingan kalau sampai akhir September, awal Oktober kena ada roll out. Saya tidak mahu bertangguh dan saya tidak mahu kerana satu dua syarikat mengubah pendirian uh, uh, rancangan kerajaan uh, roll out 5G terkendala. So kita on track, kita kekalkan on track. It was reported recently that Maxis Berhad and U Mobile Syndrome Berhad had decided not to take a stake in DNB for the 5G program. Four MNOs, namely Cellcom Aziata Berhad, DG.com Berhad, YTL Communications Syndrome Berhad, or YES, and Telecom Malaysia Berhad TM, still stand by their respective decisions to be part of the program. Two children died in a house fire in Kampung Datuk Sulaiman Menteri in Johor Bahru this afternoon. The victims were identified as siblings Nurul Hawa Zafira Mama Fitri, two years old, and Muhammad Zafran, three years old. The Brow Fire and Rescue Department Acting Chief Muhammad Rizwan Malik Rivan said they received an emergency call about the incident at 1.41 p.m. A total of 21 firemen from the Tabrao and Larkin fire stations were deployed to the scene after receiving the call. In a release statement, he said the fire caused damage to about 60% of the house and two victims were found dead in the bedroom. He noted that members of the public had started putting out the fire before the arrival of the firemen. He said the situation was brought under control as of 2.20 p.m. The Ministry of Higher Education, or MOHE, will leave the case of a foreign PhD student who claimed that his research had been stolen by a University Malaya or UM supervisor, which went viral on social media recently, to UM and the police for further action. Now, as Mr. Datuk Sri Dr. Noraini Ahmad said that UM had lodged a police report and handed over the investigations to the relevant authorities. 
UM telah membuat laporan polis uh, berkaitan dengan uh, yang TikTok yang viral tersebut dan saya rasa eloklah kita tunggu laporan daripada polis dan siasatan daripada polis berkaitan perkara berkenaan uh, sebab UM uh, dia telah menghantar laporan dan dia menyatakan bahawa dia telah membuat laporan polis berkaitan dengan allegation uh, tersebut. Yeah. She said this when asked to comment on the development of the viral issue of a foreign student lodging a police report against UM, claiming that his research was taken without his knowledge. The student claimed that he had spent almost two years completing the study and was disappointed when his study was stolen by the university. On the 29th of August, UM issued a statement which denied the allegations and said that it is the university's policy that research and academic studies of its students are the property of the university. Still to come, 100,000 local businesses to benefit from JMKM at D Dagang. Now, a total of 100,000 local businesses is set to benefit from the Jualan Mura. Keluarga Malaysia at D Dagang, which was launched today with an expected total gross sales of more than 1.5 billion ringgit via 5 million online transactions. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said through the campaign, 17 digital platform partners will offer affordable promotions and incentives to Malaysians from this month until December. Kita telah menetapkan, di atas kuasa telah menetapkan pembelian online ini hanya untuk warga negara sahaja. Ia ini mereka perlu memasukkan data kewarganegaraan, ia ini IC. Uh, ada pembelian diskaun ini hanya untuk uh, warga negara sahaja. Uh, dan uh, satu transaksi dihadkan uh, kepada RM500 untuk mendapat RM100 uh, nilai diskaun. Tujuannya supaya lebih ramai orang uh, dapat uh, he said this in a press conference after launching the Jualan Murah Keluarga Malaysia at D Dagang at Plaza Shah Alam today. The campaign is part of the Budget 2022 initiatives and JMKM at D Dagang, together with its digital platform partners, will channel 300 million ringgit worth of financial support to local businesses through various e-commerce and e-payment platforms aimed at improving their sales capabilities and income. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industry, or MAFI, through the Federal Agriculture Marketing Authority, FARMA, is committed to continuing with the Jualan Mura Keluarga Malaysia, or JMKM, program throughout the country for the benefit of consumers and entrepreneurs. Deputy Agriculture and Food Industry Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Hamza said since JMKM was organised, as much as 176,000 ringgit in savings had been obtained by the more than 30 thousand visitors. Mahfi telah diberikan tanggungjawab untuk menyegarakan jualan murah keluarga Malaysia ini pertamanya di negeri Melaka sebanyak 28 dun yang keduanya di Kelantan 47 dun dan juga di Sabah 74 dun jumlah 144 dun jadi Melaka ini kita telah berjaya mengadakan sebanyak 25 dun Beberapa minggu yang lalu, sejak daripada 20 bulan 8, ia, ia menjabat sambutan yang cukup hebat sekali. He told this to reporters at the Melaka JMKM program organised by Pharma. He also said that a total of 22 programmes which offer savings of up to 20% were carried out from the 20th to the 28th of August, recording accumulative sales of 893,000 ringgit. The early birds who arrived at the programme got the opportunity to buy essential items comprising sugar, flour, 2 kilograms of cooking oil and a packet of 5 kilogram rice for only 20 ringgit from the normal price of 33 ringgit 40 cent, but it's limited to only 100 buyers. Meanwhile, Pharma is optimistic about achieving its 11 million ringgit sales target for this year via direct sales from farms or JTDL. Its Director General, Datuk Zainal Abidin, 
Yang Razali said as of July, about 7 million ringgit in sales were recorded nationwide, involving 855 selected locations, offering 5 to 10 percent discounts on goods. He said besides benefiting the people to get food supplies directly from the farm at a lower price, it also allows about 15,000 entrepreneurs involved in agriculture under the guidance of farmer to increase their income. Kita menyasarkan uh, sehingga hujung tahun uh, nilai jualan kita adalah sebanyak 11 juta dan sehingga kini kita telah pun mencapai uh, nilai jualan uh, oleh usahawan itu sebanyak uh, 7 juta dan saya yakin bahawa ianya dapat mencapai lebih daripada sasaran yang telah pun ditetapkan dan kita menyasarkan bahawa sebanyak lebih kurang dalam 855 kali operasi untuk jualan terus di Perladang. The JTDL involves departments and agencies under the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industry such as the Fisheries Development Authority of Malaysia selling a variety of essential goods such as fish, chicken, vegetables and fruits. He was met at the Kuarga Malaysia Cheap Sale Program hosted by Pharma and officiated by Deputy Agriculture and Food Industries Minister One Datuk Sri Ahmad Hamza. Datuk Zainal Abidin said Pharma is committed to cooperating with other ministries to ensure national food security. Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Datuk Zuraida Kamaruddin has urged small holders to be part of the Sustainable Oil Palm Growers Cooperatives or KPSM to enable the Malaysian Palm Oil Board or MPOB to monitor and resolve their problems better. Now she said KPSM is responsible for coordinating and monitoring management of sales to ensure a more organised process and act as a middleman for small holders and the MPOB or the industry. Ini adalah kaedah yang memang uh, kementerian bersama uh, Malaysia Palm Oil Board <coughs> mengusahakan untuk agar penanaman penanaman penanam sawit kecil ini bergerak sebagai satu kumpulan kluster dan itu dalam uh, kelompok uh, koperasi. Jadi ini memudahkan untuk kementerian dan juga uh, MPOB uh, menguruskan uh, penanam penanam kebun kecil ini. Speaking to reporters after officiating the KPSM Kimani's Berhad Weighing Centre in Membakut Sabah today, Datuk Zuraida also encouraged the establishment of more cooperatives to enable the government to provide assistance and incentives to cooperatives members. Until July 2022, 69 KPSMs were established nationwide, 24 in the peninsula, 27 in Sabah and 18 in Sarawak. A total of 66 KPSM weighing centres have been built and is implementing Group Fresh Fruit Bunch or FFB sales direct to factories totalling 149,241 tonnes. Coming up in sport, government to continue assisting former athletes. Now, the government will continue to channel aid through the National Athletes Welfare Foundation, or YAKIP, in recognition of the services of former athletes who had brought glory to the nation. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the government recently contributed an allocation of 3 million ringgit to YAKIP to implement more programs this year, such as entrepreneurship courses that can benefit and boost the income of its members. The Prime Minister also urged Yaqib to be more proactive in helping former national athletes who are facing problems to prevent them from being manipulated by certain parties. He said such efforts can ease the burden of former athletes who are facing financial problems or seeking medical treatment. Sekadang-kadang ada setengah pihak cuba memanipulasi bekas atlet ini untuk kepentingan mereka. Saya tadi saya cakap dengan Datuk Menteri, Datuk Seri Menteri dan juga pengurusi Yakib supaya melihat kepada isu yang berkaitan dengan seorang bekas atlet Paralimpik yang dikatakan terpaksa menjual tisu di tepi jalan. Saya difahamkan 
Yakib telah berusaha membantu tetapi ditolak bantuan tersebut dan akhirnya jatuh ke tangan pihak yang tidak bertanggungjawab untuk memanipulasikan dan cuba membawa imej yang tidak baik kepada Yakib dan juga Kementerian Belia Datukan. He said this when officiating Yakib's 7th annual general meeting today. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said there are many former athletes who have yet to register with Yakib and he wants the foundation to try to register more ex-athletes to ensure assistance can be provided as best as possible. Meanwhile, Ismail Sabri also instructed Youth and Sports Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Faiza Azumu to identify vacant land belonging to the Youth and Sports Ministry for the purpose of constructing Yakib's own building. Two Malaysian Jiu-Jitsu women athletes achieved remarkable feats as they backed one goal each in the World Masters International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation Championships 2022 in Las Vegas, United States. Cassandra J. Poyong, who represented Team Buddha International, clinched gold in Master One Purple Feather category. Another Malaysian athlete, Ai Jin Lee, who also represented Team Buddha International, conquered the Master Two Purple Rooster category. Malaysia Jiu-Jitsu Federation in a social media post described both Cassandra and Ai Jin's victory in Las Vegas as a special gift for this year's National Day as well as Malaysia Day. Now, the National Sports Institute, or ISN, will conduct an MRI scan to determine the extent of the injury sustained by the National Badminton Women's Doubles player, Pearlie Tan, in the second round of the 2022 Japan Open on Thursday. Now, ISN Chief Executive Officer Amar Faisal Momaramli said the MRI scan on Pearlie will be done after the player arrives from Japan in a day or two. Amar Faisal said so far the information obtained by the ISN that the injury is in the knee and is likely to be related to other parts. He said it was not possible to confirm whether she suffered an anterior cruciate ligament or ACL injury and only through MRI scanning that the ISN would know the extent of the injury. Now, Pearlie's injury saw her end her fight with her partner, M. Tina, when they faced South Korean pair Big Ha Na and Lee Yu Lim in the second round of the tournament held at the Maruzen Intec Arena, Osaka. After trailing 11-16 in the deciding set, Pearlie decided to withdraw and left the court in a wheelchair in tears as the South Koreans advanced to the quarterfinals. And that's it from us this evening. Wrapping up with a reminder of our top story, students get to keep Paranti Siswa tablets. Join us for more updates at 12.30pm tomorrow. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.